Hello, I'm Daniel Rubenstein. It's May 27th, 2024. This is the daily briefing of the Israeli Citizen Spokesperson's Office. If you're watching live online, you can start submitting questions. If I can't answer you live, I will go through all the comments later. Today is day 234 of the October 7th war. Yesterday afternoon, Hamas fired a barrage of rockets from the city of Rafa to the greater Tel Aviv area. A few hours later, the IDF carried out what it said was a precision strike in Rafa against two Hamas arch-terrorists, Yasin Rabia and Khaled Nagar. According to the IDF, Rabia managed all of Hamas's terrorist activity in the Judea and Samaria region. Rabia funded, planned, and carried out numerous attacks in the West Bank that killed Israelis. Nagar was a senior official in Hamas's West Bank headquarters. He directed shooting attacks, transferred funds for Hamas's military in Gaza, and carried out several deadly attacks that killed Israelis. The IDF said it was aware of reports indicating that as a result of the strike, a fire started nearby, which caused harm to civilians. The IDF said that the incident was under review, and the top IDF prosecutor is investigating the circumstances of the strike. The IDF strike on two Hamas arch-terrorists responsible for attacks in the West Bank comes only a few weeks after senior Hamas leader Osama Hamdan revealed that Hamas was working on plans to massacre many more Israelis in the West Bank. In recent years, Hamas has increased its efforts to murder Israelis in the West Bank. You're only hearing about it less because after the October 7th massacre, everyone's focus shifted to Gaza. The threat from Hamas is real. Of rocket fire, massacres, and more October 7th style atrocities. There has been an intense international campaign to force Israel to end its military operations in the Hamas stronghold of Rafah. The pressure comes from NGOs, international courts, many governments around the world, and sympathetic media. This is essentially what that pressure says to Hamas. It says, if you and 3,000 of your well-armed colleagues decide to massacre people at a music festival, burn families in their homes, gun down people in their cars, occupy villages, partake in barbaric sexual violence, and take grandparents and small children as hostages. If you do this, make sure when your attack is over that you hide in your densely populated hometown where your family, friends, neighbors, teachers, and local police think you are heroes the international community will protect you and help ensure that you are in a position to fulfill your promise to do it all again soon. This is what Hamas hears. Hamas sees the pressure on Israel and says to itself, our strategy is working. Hamas fighters move with civilians in Gaza to wherever the civilians evacuate to. We need the whole world to make clear that Hamas's strategy does not work and cannot work. Nearly eight months after the October 7th massacre, too many people have forgotten or never learned what Hamas really is. Hamas is a barbaric terrorist organization that has absolutely zero concern for human life. The Hamas charter says, Israel will exist and will continue to exist until Islam abolishes it, as it abolished that which was before it. The Hamas charter also says, the hour of judgment shall not come until the Muslims fight the Jews and kill them, so that the Jews hide behind the trees and stones, and each tree and stone will say, O Muslim, O servant of Allah, there is a Jew behind me, come and kill him. In other words, Hamas wants to destroy Israel and annihilate the Jewish people. Hamas is openly genocidal, and it has been openly genocidal for nearly 40 years. The list of horrific quotes from Hamas leaders is so vast that I only have time to present a few. Hamas co-founder Mahmoud al-Zahar said, Allah willing their expulsion from Palestine in its, in its entirety is certain to come. We are no weaker or less honorable than the peoples that expelled and annihilated the Jews. The day we expel them is drawing near. Hamas cleric Yunus al-Astal said, the Jews are brought in droves to Palestine so that the Palestinians and the Islamic nation behind them will have the honor of annihilating the evil of this gang. Bacteria are far less dangerous than the Jews. Week after week, genocidal sermons are broadcasted from Hamas mosques in Gaza. One Hamas preacher said, our doctrine in fighting you, the Jews, 
is that we will totally exterminate you. We will not leave a single one of you alive. Indoctrination in Gaza starts at a young age. On a children's show, a little girl says, I will shoot the Jews. The host asks, all of them? Yes, the girl says. The host answers, good. The October 7th massacre was the fulfillment of the Hamas dream. For many Palestinians, it was the happiest day of their lives. Thousands of civilians in Gaza followed the Hamas fighters into Israel on October 7th. They murdered, raped, looted, took hostages, and bragged about it. This is why Israel is at war. The Hamas charter says there is no solution to the Palestinian problem except by jihad. For nearly 40 years, Hamas has lived up to the values that it put forth in its charter. In the 1990s and early 2000s, Hamas carried out suicide bombings on buses, in restaurants, in cafes, at malls, in nightclubs, and at hotels. There was blood in the streets of Israel. Hamas became more popular as a result. In 2005, Israel withdrew its soldiers and civilians from Gaza. Hamas became more popular as a result. It won the Palestinian parliamentary elections in 2006. In 2007, Hamas seized power in Gaza, violently overthrowing its rival, the Palestinian Authority. Hamas turned Gaza into a base for launching attacks against Israel. Tens of thousands of rockets, tunnels that crossed under the Israeli border and opened near Israeli homes, balloons with fire starters attached that ignited Israeli fields. There were wars with Hamas in 2008, 2012, 2014, and 2021. Now Israel is at war with Hamas again. Hamas chose the time of this war, and it chose the place of this war. Hamas is responsible for the consequences of its decision to pursue a war of annihilation against Israel. Don't let anyone forget it. Let's now go with some questions from whoever is watching across social media, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. All right, Daniel, uh, first question we have coming from Saul on Twitter. Uh, did Hamas change its charter? I read that Hamas was willing to accept a Palestinian state. Did Hamas change its charter? This is a great question, and it's one that I get a lot. Hamas did not change its charter. What happened was in 2017, Hamas published a new policy document. And I remember at the time that many newspapers like the Financial Times, The Independent, and others they reported at the time that Hamas dropped its call for the destruction of Israel. These articles are still live online. You can read them. Now, it would have been big news if Hamas had changed its charter and dropped its call for the destruction of Israel, but it was false. And I know it was false because I did something that apparently nobody cared to do, which was read the document and use my brain. There is an English version. I printed it out here along with the original Hamas charter. This is what the 2017 document says, Hamas believes that no part of the land of Palestine shall be compromised or conceded, irrespective of the causes, the circumstances, and the pressures, and no matter how long the occupation lasts. Hamas rejects any alternative to the full and complete liberation of Palestine from the river to the sea. However, However, it says, without compromising its rejection of the Zionist entity and without relinquishing any Palestinian rights, Hamas considers the establishment of a fully sovereign and independent Palestinian state with Jerusalem as its capital along the lines of the 4th of June 1967 with the return of the refugees and the displaced to their homes from which they were expelled to be a formula of national consensus. Okay, there's a lot there. In other words, Hamas is willing to accept the establishment of a Palestinian state along the lines that existed before the 1967 war, but it will not give up its goal of destroying Israel. So if a Palestinian state is hypothetically established, Hamas would see that as just a phase in its ongoing war against Israel. Like the meaning, that, of, the meaning of the text that Hamas uses in its policy document, it's completely compatible with its goal of destroying Israel. Hamas has been clear about what it wants for 40 years, and I wish more people would stop living in denial. Next question comes from Simone on Instagram. Can peace happen with Arab states? What is the future of the Abraham Accords in the aftermath of the October 7 war? 
can peace happen with Arab states? First of all, that's an easy yes, because Israel has peace agreements right now with Egypt and Jordan. They are Arab states. The peace between Israel and Egypt and Israel and Jordan, it's not what you would call a warm peace, but a cold peace, I would say it's better than a hot war. Israel has always wanted to expand the circle of peace with other Arab countries. This has been Israel's goal from 1948. It's in Israel's Declaration of Independence. But for most of Israel's history, Arab countries were not willing to make peace with Israel until Israel first made peace with the Palestinians. And since Palestinian demands were impossibly high, peace with Arab states remained quite elusive. In 2002, I remember this, it was a few months after the 9-11 attacks. It was the height of the Palestinian campaign of suicide bombings. March 2002, the Arab League published what it called the Arab Peace Initiative. It had nothing to do with peace, and it wasn't an initiative. It was an ultimatum. It demanded that Israel withdraw from 100% of the West Bank, Gaza, the Golan Heights, and Eastern Jerusalem, and also accept what Palestinians call a just solution to the refugee problem. In other words, Israel needed to absorb 5 million hostile immigrants, which would result in the dissolution of Israel. And Israel needed to accept these demands before talks about the details could begin. Many people then and now presented this ultimatum as if it was something positive, and Israel made a mistake by rejecting it. It was a PR plan all along. Most Arab countries have insisted for the past 22 years now that this so-called Arab Peace Initiative was the only initiative. And this remained the position of most Arab countries until the year 2020. That's when the United Arab Emirates and Bahrain decided that relations with Israel were in their national interests and they weren't going to wait around for the Palestinians to make peace with Israel. The peace agreements with the UAE and Bahrain were known as the Abraham Accords. And later Morocco and Sudan joined the pact. For me, the Abraham Accords were a source of hope. It was a reminder and proof and evidence that Arab and Israeli, Muslim and Jew can find common ground, they can live in peace, they can unite over issues that they both care about. One of the reasons that Hamas invaded Israel on October 7th was to disrupt the Abraham Accords and prevent it from expanding to include countries like Saudi Arabia, which is a very short distance from Israel. It would change the Middle East if Israel and Saudi Arabia had peaceful, open, and normal relations. Time will tell if Hamas succeeded or not. All right, Daniel, and the last question today actually comes from our very own Elon Levy, who's written in to ask, how did you enjoy giving your first live briefing? How did I enjoy giving my first live briefing? That's a totally impartial question from an impartial source. Elon, well, thank you for this question. I enjoyed it very much. I may do it again soon. I want to remind all of our viewers that we are live every day, Sunday to Thursday, not every day, Sunday to Thursday, 3 p.m. Israel time, 8 a.m. East Coast time. We take questions via social media. We try to answer them. Please tell all of your friends, family, acquaintances, and social media followers to follow us. The more that we can build our audience, the more people that we will reach with our important message. Thank you for watching, and goodbye.